Okay, good morning. We're on page 77. We're, I'll just read the Kitzer to refresh ourselves what we learned in the past paragraph or two. Uh, and uh, please review it if you missed the shear or two. You have it online. You can review the shear because there's continuity here. If you miss you know, some of the mimer, you might be missing some essential information that's relevant to the continuity of the mimer. So we're on page 77 where it says Kitzer. A sinner is worse than a gnat. And that's a quote, um, it, well, it's not an actual quote, but it's based on a Gemara that the Rebbe brought in the, in, in the, in the chapter er, in the, earlier. Someone who sins and transgresses is even worse than a non-kosher animal. And evil animals, bad animals. Why? Because they <coughs> guard, they watch Hashem's command. Gam negativum. Even if it's contrary to their nature, they still are careful to do what Hashem wants. So that's, and, and yet the person who is not an animal is doing against Hashem. So that's why man who does a sin is worse than a yitush, than a gnat. Now in addition to this, he separates himself immediately when he does an Avera from God's oneness. And he blemishes the cords of his soul. And the Rebbe Rasha brought here what the Alter Rebbe brings in Tanya of Yaakov Hevel Nachlosay. You understand, remember? Yaakov is a, a, a rope of inheritance where the ropes are made up of 613 strands, and every Aveda reduces one strand. And Rahman uh, al-Islam, when it's an Aveda that involves Kares, it cuts it off immediately. So the Alter Rebbe says that when one does something inappropriate here in the Elam Hazi on earth, <coughs> it shakes the top of the rope, which is connected to, to the Neshama, the Maila in heaven. This is, so, the, so the Rasha brought this over here, and he says that this is the idea of Pirud, total separation, that's what he means, Moshe, here, and he blemishes the, the cords of his Neshama, by cutting the rope, the, of, of the, the, the thread of the rope, each one, each one, each Avera, of the 613, whether it be ase or lo sase, cuts away another cord, if not done when you're supposed to do, or you don't, you're not supposed to do, and you do. So who would want to cut his cord? This is the umbilical cord that we need to keep, not that we need to cut. So who would want to cut his cord? Only, only a shaita, a fool. It's, it's like committing suicide. But why? Look at the word the Rebbe uses here. Ein, ein ha'odam margish. He's missing regesh, feeling. You know, what's the difference between a shaita and a bardas, a fool, and someone who's intelligent, who's a bardas? Hargosha. I mean, this is even brought in Chazal. That's the whole idea of Hargosha in, 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 in regarding um, the, the Dini Tahara with a woman with Hargosha. Har, then there's the idea of Hargosha with giving birth, being able to conceive. The concept of Hergish is the root idea, the key idea to intelligence. If you have Hergish, you could develop Yudia. You can, you, can, you can thrive on knowledge. But if you're missing hergish, or you don't use your hergish, then the knowledge is just in the realm of knowledge. And this is an answer, by the way, to a question that we all ask. Why is it that I daven and I learn and I don't feel? Right? Any serious person who davens and learns asks this question, or should ask this question, and the answer is because you're missing hergish. Why are you missing hergish? Because you didn't work on regish. Now what does regish mean? Screaming, dancing? No. Can that invoke regesh sometimes? But regesh is a feeling inside. You develop a feeling. So when you say, Haydu Lashem, Kiru Vishmai, that's the first four words of davening each morning. And if you take the time, you stop. You don't go further. 
And you ask yourself, why is Hoidu la Hashem? Why is giving thanks to Yud Kevavke, to Hashem? Yet, Kiru, calling, is only to, to Shmoy, to his name. And you ask yourself, what's the difference between la Hashem and Shmoy? So, for that, we have, we have to learn Chesidus. Chesidus talks about the difference between the essence of Hashem, his emanation, but even if you don't learn Chesidus, let's say you, you, um, oh, if you learn Chesidus, but you're not aware of this concept. The fact that you stop and you take time and you think about this thing, this, the thoughtfulness, the mindfulness, the, the calming down and thinking that itself is already a process that can evoke a little hergish, a little feeling. And the more you think about it, the more you'll feel. So, regish, there are different ways to be to evoke regish. Again, one way is the breast of the Hasidim, they clap with their hands, they jump up and down, and that's that's part of, I'm not saying that's all they do, but that's part of their regish. The vision of the Hasidim sing together beautifully, as where, where the words express their, their feelings of, of um, through the song. The Chabad Hasidim uses Boninus meditation. And so you, so you have the various groups, right? But what are they all trying to do? And then you have the Litvisha, who have their style, whether it be shaking or closing their eyes, making with their hands. They're also trying to get regish. Everyone's trying to accomplish regish. And that's what the Rashab says here. If you, if, if, if the, when the Yetzirah comes to you, Nefesh Abamis, and he tells you to commit a sin, and you know that this is foolishness because you're cutting a strand, and Chas Sholom. It can cut the rope, and you're in deep trouble. You're finished, God, God forbid, right? So no fool will do that. So how can you do that? The answer is, I don't feel it. <laughs> I don't feel it. I'm, I'm the same guy. I'm the same guy. So the guy says, I will eat on Yom Kippur a piece of chazer, and I'm not going to drop dead. How do you like that? How do you like that? Right? <laughs> well, you don't understand, my friend. It's a cumulative. Let's continue now on page 79. Mimer Hey, the fifth Mimer Perikalif. The he named Masha Yetzahara Maftichai. He still continues his thought. He's still busy with the Yetzahara, the Rashab. The he named Masha Yetzahara Maftichai. The fact that the Yetzahara promises pers- the person. Shigam in Yasem Maisehara. That even if you do something bad, Mikol Mokim Toiv Yiloi, nevertheless, you'll still have it good. Like I just told you. Eat. Right? As he quotes the Pasuk early from Dvorim, you will bless your, your heart, will say, I could go my merry old way, my, and, 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 and Hashem will be good to me, and I'm going to still have goodness and kindness. Says that Hashem, this is also from the convincing of the Yetzir, the Yetzir Horror. Asher Neifes Titofeno Sif Seizora. He quotes a Pasuk, which means, that uh, the honey drips from the lips of a harlot. But her end is bitter as worm as wormwood. It seems sweet, it's a harlot, it's it's a prostitution and everything else. But at the end she realizes her mistake. And this has been documented today too. Says the Rebbe, to understand this whole idea of, um, better, we have to, we need to preface the Posik. That's the Posik in, in, in Devorim. I shall have peace, shol, he, right? No, he, he will bless, he was Borich Bovov, Sholom Yil, I will have peace, because I will go in my, uh, Mary way, right way, Vlaman Swaysa Rovas at Smeas so that um I I I I quench the thirst. Umashpoy sa posuk. What does the posuk imply? The Khibashridos Libi Hunasinas Tam Amasha Kosov Kaidim is Borak Lubovi. That the words Kibishridas Libi in the Posik is a reason for what's written before that why the person will say in their heart. I can go do my merry old my merry good way. I can do whatever I want. Why? Because I'll get away with it. The Bishum Sholom Yili. And that's why I will have peace. So the Rebbe asks a question. Seemingly, if this is the Pshat and the Pasik, it's not understood. The Eich Yidame bin Nafshoi, the Dafke Kasha Yelah, Bishidus Lipi. How 
is it that he thinks that specifically when he will go Bishnidis Lipoi through this year Shalom he'll have peace? I mean, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> if you're acting in your own way, you think you're going to have peace? If you're going on Hashem's way, Yoni, the, the Torah says you'll have peace. But if you're going in your own way, how is it you'll have peace? But Right? What is the meaning in the verse that you quench the thirst? The Rashi comes along Rashi and says, Shveis does not mean quench, but Shveis means join, connect, chibur. He brings a posik. You join one year to another. So we see that the word Svu which is the, the, the root of the, associated with the word sof sfais means joining. V'horadak, Rab David Kimchi, Peirush, he explains, not that the word sfais, Moshe, means joining, but rather Peirush Loshen Tosefis. The meaning of the word sfais is Tosefis, to add. And he brings a posse in Yirmiya, I'm sorry, in, 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 in Bamidbar, to add more. Another positive, you add, and when it comes to bringing the burnt, off, burnt offering, you add a zevach up atop and above, uh, above, in addition to the ola, until the ola sacrifice. So we see that the word safu means. Hoisafa, addition, top of 81. Now we go to the second word in the Pasig that we quoted from Devorim. Right? It says, Osvais, it's Meya. What does Rava, it's Meya, mean thirst? Rava, Akum, Oivde, Avoid, Zem, Umazolish. This refers to the Goyim, the worshippers, those that worship idols. Shesveim, Veinim, Tsmeim. Who are thirsty? Uh, who are? I'm sorry. Who are satiated, and are not thirsty for the Creator, and that's why they worship idols and they don't worship God. They don't need a God. Who is thirsty? Knesses Yisro, the Yidden, the Jews. They are thirsty, hungry. For God's fear, or the kaim of the mitzvahs of it to reveal his mitzvahs. The hina yadu, what's known, the knesses is all lemaila, the congregation of Israel as they are from the perspective of heaven, lemaila, shupinus malchus, we call that the level of malchus, he, nishomas yisro shelamata. They are the equivalent, the counterpart of, of, of the yidin hilamata. Of the Jews below. So the Jews here, Lamata, the Eden, are also called thirsty because we're thirsty for our Creator. So now, what did he say now? What was all he was saying basically that what it says in the Posik, Lamasva, to quench the thirst, who is thirsty? The Yidin are thirsty. The Goyim that worship idols, they're not thirsty, they have idols. We said earlier, uh, right before, a paragraph before, that this refers to what we call the kingship, the quality of Malchus. Hasidus explains that Malchus is a source uh, of, of, the, of creating and sustaining all worlds. Your kingship is the kingdom of all worlds. The whole Elamim Shadish is Avusa Mipkinas Malchus. All worlds, the source of their creation, how are they created from Malchus, from kingship, from Hashem <coughs> being the Melech, and Hashem saying, I'm taking the energy from above, I'm transmitting it to the what's below through what we call the process called Malchus. Uksiv <coughs> says, Viato Mikhayas Kulam and you Hashem sustain and live in everything. Viato Hain, next page, eighty-three. Hoisius, what are the word words ato? Vi ato. 
the letters in the word atok start with an aleph, vi a, to, until a, until tof. Ato, me aleph atof, vehem haisi is hadibur. This refers to all the letters of the aleph base, the prinus malchus, that are within the kingship in malchus, shebehem nimshechai asoilamis. In other words, in order to sustain the worlds, in order for the worlds to function and go, you need to have oisius. Hila, what does the word oisius come from? It says in Chassidus, Osa biker, there's a posik, morning arrives. Osa, meaning it's bright. The oisius give us brightness, my ship. In other words, when you're able to put things into words, you have brightness. Yes, Hillel. Could you say it again? I didn't, I didn't get the pasuk. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't heard it. Asa, aleph, sof, aleph, boiker, morning. I forget where the pasuk is from, but it's from Tanakh. Asa, boiker, morning arrives. That, that's the literal meaning. So Chassidus says <coughs> that we, the word asa with a sof and the word oisius are associated. Letters, words, Bring biker, they bring revelation. When something is in machshava, Shmuel, when something's only in thought, as powerful as machshava is, which we need to talk properly, because if you speak without thinking, you're a fool. Nevertheless, it remains in machshava. You can be a genius in thought, but if you can't articulate it, you're missing illumination. You can have a great teacher, Yoini, that's tremendous in thought, but he doesn't have good explanation. He doesn't have good hasbara. So there's something lacking. There's something lacking. So, oisios, words, letters, sentences, give illumination to thought. So the Rebbe says here, when it says, listen to the Pasuk, Vi'ata mechaya eskula, and you, Hashem, enliven all, all, everything, right? What does the word Moshe Ata stand for? Vi from the end, from the Aleph to the Tuf, meaning all letters from Aleph to Tuf, Mechayas Kulam. That's the way you enliven everything. You hear that Taich? It's a beautiful Taich. That through the Ata, you get Mechayas. Yes, Shmuel. It doesn't mention it here, but I, maybe I thought I saw it somewhere, I said this, at the Hay at the end, that, that's the ACS of deeper uh, the penis malthus. That's the Yeah, okay. And, and, yeah, exactly. Maybe he'll say it later. I don't know, but you're right. Here he just says, but Shmuel makes a very good point. That there's, there's still a, a hay left at the end, right? Vi ata, aleph, tough hay. You understand? You're familiar with the hay at the end. So it says in Chassidus, because hay is malchus, that's malchus. So hay is the malchus, which is the yifan dibur, speak, speech. So it fits into what we're saying. Valtikrim Bechaya, let's back into the text, second line. The Altikrim Bechaya, do not read the word in the Posik, Mechaya, enliven, but read the word Ele Mehave. Right? What's the difference between Yoni, Lahavos, to create, or Lechayos, Lachios, to enliven? One is existence, to be existent. And one is, once it's existent, it should remain. So the Chazal say, Al tikre mechaye. Don't read the word, Fiato mechayes kulam, and you, Hashem. Enlivens everything, but really what it means is, you create everything. You're mahave everything. The Rashab says, as is explained elsewhere, the Yatua. The Prina, so, so no, what, what is he saying with the Shmuel? What he's saying is that Dibur is not just for Chayas, but Dibur is for his Savos. You hear the word? You could learn Pshat, Hillel, you could say that the purpose for Dibur is to keep it going. But the thing exists without it. So Chassidus says, no. In order for it to be, to exist, you must have Dibur. Let's continue. The Yadua, the Prina Zu, Shu Mokera Mahabu Machayo Ilam is that this level of Malchus, which is the source of his Avos, both creation, 
existence and in enlivening of in sustaining of the worlds who raka ha'orah levad. It's only an emanation. Shebein arech legabi atzmos, which is, has no comparison to the essence. As much as it sustains it and it enlivens it and it creates it, it's wonderful, guys. But it's only a ha'ora, an emanation, a reflection. It's not the real McCoy. What's the real McCoy? Atzmos, essence. The hare. Why? Why must you say that? Listen to his argument. From the essence of Hashem, world would ne- the world we have now, you only would not be able to exist and be created. Not, not, why? It's too overpowering. If the sun comes out without a shield on it, an Arctic, it burns up the world. If you come into a classroom and you overwhelm your, te- your students, the next day they don't show up. You could be a genius from Harvard and Columbia and Oxford, but you're, 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 you're an absent-minded professor. We don't understand the word you're saying. Goodbye, we'll find another teacher. So atmos as essence, which is infinite in its totality, lohoya efsher. It was not possible that there should be direct creation from that to create nivroyim baligvul, creatures that are limited. In time and space. Why not? We have a rule. Gvul. Something that's limited. And, and built a bal gvul. Something that's limitless. Ein aroich klau. There's no comparison between the two. One to chreistot and one trillion. Is there some comparison? Yes, they're both numbers. But we, and they're both numbers, Moshe, and they're both in this world. They're both in the world of Gvul. One is one, and a trillion is a trillion. How do you get a trillion? From many ones. So what do we see? That there is a comparison, a yachas in Hebrew, an association between one and a trillion. But when we talk about Gvul and built about Gvul, limit, limits, and the world of limitless, it's, no, it's two different agenda, it's two different arenas, and there's no comparison whatsoever. has explained in many places the Hasidus at length. Kiim. So here's the question. So how was the able to how did Hashem create the world? If Hashem Atmos is Ain Sof, if it's Ain Sof at infinite, and it, and what did, what came from the creation, Yonison? Finite. How, do, how is it that you can, you can go from infinity to finite? And the answer is because it, co- it comes Ratmia or Levad. The Rebbe says, you're right. We're all, the, cre- the creation of Bepoyo came from Shem Elohim, as it says in Chassidus, which is our order, an emanation from Shem Hashem. Nasu with the Savo Elohim. So we have, a, we have an interesting situation. The power of creation comes from the Ein Sof, but the facilitation of it into the practicality vis-a-vis creation, a limited world, is a, comes from our The teacher, in other words like this, it's important for a teacher to be a genius and have all this information, but to facilitate that the students become interested and ultimately come to the same understanding and even more, it needs to be filtered. The filtering process is called gvul. And that's the rule that we have. The Rebbe Rashab, in his Maimorim of Tofrei Samach Vav, the known Hemshech, the known continuum of Maimorim, he has a Maimor there on Parshas Noyach that Rebbe Melech Tzibla Aram Ashpiel over Sholem taught us. And I remember it, it like it was, it blew our, it blew our minds because the Rebbe says there, what type of creation would the world be if the world came from 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 Ein Sof? What type of world would we have? So the so the Rebbe Rashab says it's not that we wouldn't have a world. We would have a world that everything is bleak gvul. Now we don't understand that because everything we have is gvul is limited. But the Rashab says it's not that you wouldn't have a world. You would have a limitless world. Again, how to understand that I don't know, but. I can, I can hear the words, I can hear the idea. But how do you make, 
How do you make a gvul world? It must be that there's a tzimtzum, which means the ha'ara, an emanation, a reflection. You must contract the infinity of the light in order for, the, for there to be a result that's, that's, that's uh, workable and, and, and feasible and adaptable. That's what he says here. V'zeu mashu p'chines malchus, next paragraph, hu p'chines shem. Right? We spoke about hoidu l'ashem, this was my own, you know, interjection. Kiru v'shmoi. Call in his name. What is a name? I call you by your name. Hillel. Yoinesit. Whatever. What does it mean that we have a name? Chayim. Melech shmei nikra There's a... The king's name is upon the people. In other words, the purpose of the name is for the people. The Hashem Hurak Ha'ore Bilvad. A name is not the essence of the person. A name is an identifier. You hear that? It's an identifier. So it does say, you might be wondering, it says when someone, Chas V'Sholem, God forbid, um, faints, whisper their name into their ear. And that will help wake them up. So what do we see? So see the says, that doesn't prove that it touches, it, that it's the essence. It's a filter that's associated with the essence, but it's not the essence. But being that it's associated, it gives a, uh, a wake-up call to the essence. So you can wake up from your faint. But a name is not who the person is. If we were not called by the names that we have, would we be different? No. We, of course, whatever name we, were, we, we, we would have would, would express who we are. Right? What do we say, Pesach? Chocham mahu oimer. Right? Literally, how do you read that, Yoni? How did you explain it to your kids, this Pesach? Chocham says, ba ba ba. Russia says, ba ba ba. There's another way of reading it. Chacham. You know why the Chacham says what he says? Mahu. Based on who he is, that's what he says. You're a fool? You speak like a fool. You're smart? You speak smart. You're simple? You speak simple. You don't know what's going on? You speak like you don't know what's going on. Mahu. Oimer. That's what he says. Continuing aside. And oh, he says here what I said before. The name of a man, a person's name, look inside, Hebra. It's not the essence of the person. Next page, top of 85. So too, the vitality of all worlds, the Chayis, who rak Pchinesh Shem, Vahore Levad. It's only a reflection, an emanation, and a name. It's not the essence. But that's the way it has to be for it to function fine. Kitzer. Mehem Shech We learned in the paragraph from the continuation of the verse that he quotes from Dvorin. Ki b'shirus libi eilech mashma shu nisinus tam al v'izborech sholem yili. The Pasek implies that the reason why you will have peace and harmony is because you walk in the merry ways that your heart dictates. And he questions, oh really? Umahu, <laughs> and then the next question that he asked in the paragraph was, that the, 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 the thirst will be quenched. So he brought the, the, the idea that Rava is Akum, who is already... Uh, satiated the the, the the goyim that serve I, worship idols because they have their idols to satisfy them. Who is tzmeya? Who is thirsty? Nishmas Yisrael, the Jewish neshamas, the shorshem misvides amalchus mokar elumus vanevroyim. Their source is from malchus, that's the source of worlds and creatures. Shiaora levad, which is only an emanation. Shabein aruch, which has no comparison. Lo atzmos lochein nekra shame. Therefore, it's called shame. Now, I don't know if you got the two. What's the connection between the, the Posik and his concept of Malchus? You know what he's saying? He's saying, why are we Eden? Thirsty because our creation comes only from our order, for an emanation. So we're thirsty for the rest. So we want Atzimus, we want Insof. 
It's like the student, Yoni, the student, who understands, you know, I'm reading now um, a, a, uh, a diary that actually, oh, Hillel, one of Hillel's Rebbe's wrote, I believe, the Tona Rebbe wrote, it's called the Tona Diary. Hillel, are you aware of this? No, tell me about it. Okay, well, this is top secret uh, diary that the Tona Rebbe, Rebbe Yitzchuk Meir Twersky, that's the one we're talking about, right? That's your Rebbe, the one that, that Rebbe, Yitzchuk no, Meir? No, my, my Rebbe is Yitzchuk Meir uh, Weinberg. Weinberg. So maybe, maybe okay. that's Yitzchak, Yitzchak Menachem Weinberg. So maybe that's him. I, you know, I better check. Maybe because uh, all okay. in the diary it says Yud Mem. That's all it says. Yud Mem. Okay. Anyway, okay. And, and thank you for that because I didn't have to change something I wrote. Anyway, and, so the Weinberg would be the key. Right. I got it. Uh, all the other, all the other rappers were, were Tversky's. Right. Right. Anyway, so he he. It was a student of the Pnei Menachem of Ger, right? Yes. So that's, that's correct, that. Yeah. So that's it. That's his diary. From 1991 to 1995 or so, 96, he heard from the Pnei Menachem thousands of hours of information from the past and present, and he wrote it down for himself. Well, okay. well, someone obviously got a hold of his diary and publicized it on the internet and people got access to it. And I have access to it. Someone gave it to me as well. And I'm using it. I've used it for my research because there are things there that you would normally not say. It's between a Rebbe, a Rebbe. Right. And a very close student. You talk a certain, a different Could way. you forward me the link? I would love to I, I don't have the link. Uh, actually, I don't have the link. I have the hard copy. Hold on. This is the way someone took the information, printed it out, and bound it in a book. And my friend found it on sale at Pinter's Bookstore where people, you know, it, you, you, people leave their books and people buy books for a dollar or ten dollars. And he erased the name of the person who this belonged to, said Owen should know. And here it says, Tona Diary. So it never came, it never came out like this. This is an individual who decided to make it easier, so he put it all. And my friend saw it, he bought it for, he bought it for $20, and I'm, I'm using it now for my research. So, it, 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 there's fascinating things there. <laughs> some, things, okay. some things should not be said, uh, and other things should. And, I mean, stories going back, you know, 100 years, and stories from present. Well, why am I saying all this? Because when... <laughs> You want a student, you want to, you know, you want to really dig in. You have to get to the meat and potatoes deep down. You got to find the meat in the chunk. Otherwise, you know, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can put two and two together and write. It's not, a, it's not that difficult, okay? You got to just have time and have a head on your But But the research of, of finding what's beneath the, the story... The, the, you know, the, that's exclusivity, that's, that's research. So I'm just using this as an example where a student goes further and further, and that's what we're learning here regarding Malchus. I'm bringing it back to what we're learning. Regarding Malchus, that the, the Yidna are thirsty. The Goyim are not thirsty, they have idols. They're, they're satisfied. We are thirsty. Being that we're thirsty... And what, so why are we thirsty? Because our normal day-to-day -day experience is from Malchus. And Malchus is limited, is gvul. And it has to be that way, because otherwise it's too overwhelming. But at the same time, you realize there's more to the puzzle. And you go beyond the, sh the line and you go a bit deeper. That's what he says over here. That's why Lemans Weiss that's how you quench your thirst. So first you acknowledge that this is the situation. In order for there to be a world in a limited way, in a normal way, 
in a way that we can relate to. It has to be done in such a way. But at the very same time, you're still thirsty. You realize there's more. And, and this is very important in all aspects of life, not to, not to be satisfied, but to go further and further and, 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 and pursue more and more. And, and that's, uh, it's, it's not an easy thing, you know. It's, it's not easy. I mean, I'm going through <laughs> this entire book. I'm, I'm trying, what I'm writing about, so I'm trying to see any time there's a mention of what I'm writing about here, just to make a note of it, and then to think about it, how it applies or does it doesn't apply. So it, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole Aveda. It's a whole time-consuming thing. Okay, let's learn the Kitzer. 85, the Kitzer. Mehem Shech Oh, we learned the Kitzer. I'm sorry, Shiaura. Let's learn another, another, another paragraph. Hine Beis. Since we said that the source for creation comes only from an emanation or reflection of Hashem's essence, this emanation initially was incorporated in its source. This is what we find in Pirkei Drabeloza, quote, before Hashem created the world, the, all that existed was He and His name. So we see that His name existed within He pre-creation. This is what we refer to as the name and an emanation. As it's incorporated in the essence of the infinite God, before the world was created. Then the Pirkei the Rabbi continues, Hashem is the one, the same, the same God that he was pre-creation, guess what? Even now, after the world was created, he's the same, why? Who? And only an emanation has separated itself from him to create, to enliven and create the world. Top of next page, 87. This emanation, he tomed ba'bchinas rotsi. Oh, it's always yearning and running. It can't sit still. It doesn't have zitz flesh, as we say in Yiddish. Why? Because it knows it comes from such a source. So it says, I want to go back to my source. And that's why Dr. Ebersons chapter 19 in Tanya, the candle is always flicking the light of the candle to go upward. It knows its source is the Mokarej, the source of fire. It says, I want to be there. Or the Chosset says, I want to go to my Rebbe. I'm sitting in Bet Shemesh. I'm sitting in Afghanistan. I'm sitting in California. I'm not satisfied. I want to go to my Rebbe. I want to go to my teacher. I want to go to my friends. Like the story I told you, Mendel Foot of us, that he had this one day, this palpable, heartfelt love for his old friend from Russia, Reb Aaron, Reb Aaron Blinitsky. And he says, I'm too old and I can't get on the plane. Here's money. He tells someone, get on a plane and go to him. And he says, what should I do? Give him a hug and say, this is from Mendel Foot of us, and you can come back if you want. <laughs> can you imagine? What's the pshat? He had a rotsui. You have a yearning. When you have a rotsui to something, it's insatiable. And you have to go and pursue it. Further, everything has a nature to go back to its source. So, oh, he brings the marshal for the Alter Rebbe. The nature of fire, it always flickers upward because it wants to go back to its source, the, the ball of fire. Unless you have oil and a wick, or or other items that hold the fire to stay here, if you don't have those items, you can't hold the fire. And the fire extinguishes. Even when you do hold it through oil and a wick, it's up and down, it's up and down, it's up and down. So to the aura that sustains, that enlivens the world, since it's only a aura, it's only an emanation, yoni, therefore it's always jumping, I want to go back to my source. It's always rotsi. This is what I told you before. 
Shmuel, that's why we call the Ha'ara thirsty. She'd smay it, tomid lalis lamayla. It's constantly thirsty to ascend to heaven, to its source. Meshikosuf, lamani zamechot chavi v'lo yidoyim. It says until him. Oh, I sing with COVID on a below you and I'm not silent. Says the Zaya, Nahere Tato according to the Tadil Nahere Eloi Chochich, which means the nether, fl- the flame here below strives ever, always to go to the higher flame and does not rest. Hevra, have a great day. Any questions? If, uh, yes. What to see this and what we're saying? The difference between the shame and the, the, the essence. That we're the Marash in the mind work. We say every day three times a day. I tell you, Shimcha, the Lachon, not El Hoides. So when it comes to Shimcha, there's a type. We can get an understanding. We have a Bishmak. But Lachon, the essence, this very Lachon, the Hoides. We can only. Oh, very good, Shmuel. Shmuel, you just gave us Gavalda Gataych to, to think about every day. Did you guys hear that? What? Say it again. Shmuel, you can have a Lachon Nahoides. Yes. What? You can only acknowledge. You can only say. You know, but you really don't understand it because it's it's the essence. Based on what we learned, and he, Shmuel says that he saw that in the mind of the Rebbe Marash. That's beautiful. Chevra, have a great day. We have what to be misboyned. No, not, she's not here. Zayga's going to take care.